Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Jen's Books. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Now, I've got a bit of a bonus treat for you this Friday. We have another book haul. Um, so it'd be interesting to know whether you've read any of these books, what your thoughts are, and whether you have any recommendations for me based on these. So the first one is one that I've been hearing good things about for some time. It actually won the Man Booker Prize, the International Prize in 2016. And it's The Vegetarian by Han Kang. It's got a really rather lovely front cover that's been tempting me for some time and I keep hearing good things about it but know very little actually um, about what the book is translated by Deborah Smith so it says uh, Yong Hai and her husband are ordinary people he is an office worker with moderate ambitions and mild manners she is an uninspired but dutiful wife the acceptable flat line of their marriage is interrupted when Young Hai, seeking a more plant-like existence, commits a shocking act of subversion. As her rebellion manifests in ever more bizarre and frightening forms, Hung, Young Hai spirals further and further into her fantasies of abandoning her fleshy prison and becoming possibly a tree. Um, I mean... Even after reading that blurb, I'm not entirely clear what it's about, but there are some fantastic recommendations on the back um, from all different papers and things. So, you know, I felt like I needed to give it a go. It'd be really interesting to know if you've read this book, what your thoughts are on it. It's only quite a short um, read. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Um, the next one is one that I couldn't resist because of the front cover. I got this one second hand. Uh, uh, just a slightly disturbing, retro, goofy-eyed um, cover. It's called Waiting for Ted by Marika Big. Um, and this is one, as I say, which I've got secondhand. And it was quite nice when you get something secondhand and it comes through and it's a signed edition. Um, it says on the back, after all these years, I was surprised to find that we were still in the process of trying to assemble two fully self-sustaining parts into one. Waiting for Ted charts the destruction of Rosalind and Ted's relationship at the hands of an expensive chaise long. Rosie dreams of being a traditional housewife to her big, strong working man, cooking, tending the house and Instagramming her perfect life. But she also needs to fill her house with things that she can Instagram. So where ten ba Ted bans her from spending any more of her father's money, she begins to scheme, only to watch her schemes unravel and the rest of her life with them. Told in a series of reflections over the course of an evening spent waiting for Ted, Rosie charts her relationship's downfall, how she drifted from her only friend, how she contributed to the breakdown in her parents' message, marriage, and how she never really let Ted into a perfect world. As she does, it becomes increasingly clear to the reader that Ted may not be coming home at all. So that intrigued me straight away. I love the retro cover. I, I just thought it was really stylish. It grabbed my attention quite a quick read as well so I look forward to reading that and telling you what I think. Next is a, uh, a hardcover that's quite a recent um, publication it's called Hungry Ghosts by Kevin Jared um, Hosing. Um, I don't know a huge amount of this one again I managed to get it second hand it says 1940s rural Trinidad on a hill overlooking Bell Village sits the Changor Farm, where Dalton and Marley Changor live in luxury, unrecognisable to those who reside in the farm shadow. Down below by the river is the barrack, a ramshackle building of wood and tin, divided into rooms occupied by whole families. Among these families are the Saroops. Hansen Schweter is their son, Krishna, who lives, whose lives are shaped by the backbreaking work poverty and devotion to faith. When Dalton Changur goes missing and Marley's safety is compromised, farmhand Hans is offered a generous payment to move to the farm as a watchman. It's a proposition he can't refuse. But as the mystery of Dalton's disappearance unfolds, their lives become dangerously entwined and the small community altered forever. So um, it sounds really interesting. The, the title, I think, is what got me really. Anything with ghosts in the title is one that's going to go on my TBR. Um, but it sounds quite interesting and unlike anything I've read before. So um, that sounds good. The next book is actually written by one of my old tutors and a bit of a mentor of mine, um, Robert Graham. This is the former Boy Wonder. This is a book I've been meaning to pick up for ages. Um, as I say, uh, Robert taught me through both my undergraduate and my first master's. Um, so I know him quite well and he was always really fantastic in terms of being a tutor. 
So the information says it's a rainy August in Manchester and a music writer, a music writer Peter Duffy's life is falling apart. He's knocking on 50, his career is flatlining, his marriage is failing and his teenage son barely speaks to him. And then a friend from university days invites him to a party at the manor house where he met his first love, the dazzling Sanchia Page. All the old gang are going to be there and although it's a long shot, maybe she will too, which wouldn't be helpful or would it? So um, I don't know a whole lot about it other than the blurb, but um, I wanted to read it because it was written by Robert and I'm sure it's going to be an interesting read. Um, and I like the idea of the premise of everybody sort of coming back together from a reunion um, for university as well. So looking forward to reading that. The next one is one that I've seen. It's come up a few times on different videos and in different articles. Um, and it was one that intrigued me immediately. It's called The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Sancho. And it's by Patterson Joseph. It's got a rather beautiful cover as well. Lots of sort of gilt on there. Um, the information is I had little right to live born on a slave ship where my parents both died but I survived and indeed you might say I did more. It's 1746 and Georgian London is not a safe place for a young black man especially one who has escaped slavery. After the twinkling lights and the Fleet Street coffee shops are blown out and the great houses have closed their doors for the night, Sancho must dodge slave traders, get, sorry, slave catchers and worse. The man he hoped would help, a kindly duke who taught him to write, is dying. Sancho is desperate and utterly alone. So how does Charles Ignatius Sancho meet the king, write and play highly acclaimed music, become the first black person to vote in Britain and lead the fight to end slavery? So it sounds really interesting to me. Um, and uh, it was just a premise that that enticed me straight away, uh, this sort of giving a voice to this black man in Georgian London. Um, and I think uh, the, the way it's told as well, I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, it is told in first person point of view. So it should be quite intimate as well. So looking forward to reading that. We're going all over the place with this book um, book haul this time. So we've, we've, we've gone um, from Georgian London and uh, all sorts of different places. And um, yeah, yeah, it should be quite an interesting read. The next one is one I've wanted to read for a while, one that I've seen fantastic reviews of again and again, and it's Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. And I mentioned before, I like anything with a ghost in or on the title, and this is a ghost story from my understanding. Um, so in 1838, Frederick Chopin, George Sand and her children travel to a monastery in Mallorca. There they are to create and to convalesce to live a simple life after the wildness of their Paris days. Witness to the tumultuous arrival is Blanca, the ghost of a teenage girl who has been at the monastery for over 300 years. Blanca's was a life cut short and she is outraged. Having lived in a world full, according to her mother, of beautiful men, she has found that in death it is the, wim not, it is the women she falls for, their beauty she cannot turn away from, and it is the women and girls who, over her centuries in the village and at the monastery, she has sought to protect from the attentions of men with what little power she has. And then George Sand arrives, this beautiful woman in man's clothes, and Blanca is in love. This is one, as I say, that's come up again and again in different reviews. People have really, really enjoyed it. Um, and as I say, do like things that have ghosts in, and this is told through the voice of the ghost Blanca. So looking forward to reading this one, definitely. Um, and as I say, it's one that I've been sort of been on my list that I've wanted to buy for ages. And it's even got a quotation from Sarah Waters on the on the front, so you know it's going to be good. Just a couple more. Um, one which is another historical novel, James Hines Sparrow, and that's got a quotation from Emma Donoghue on the front. This has just come out recently. Um, the blurb is, uh, I, Jacob, son of no one, father of no one, beloved of no one, a slave, a whore, a candias, a, a eunuch, a murderer, a pimp, possibly a Jew, possibly a Syrian, possibly the silt of the Nile, a labourer, an overseer, a cripple, a consumptive, an abandoned piece of property, a weathered piece of driftwood discarded by the re 
receding tide, the sole remaining resident of a deserted town in an abandoned province at the bleeding edge of a dying empire, set down this history of my life. It will never be finished for who will write my ending. And that's actually from the prologue of the book. I think this is a book that's probably going to be quite hard to read. It's interesting as a character tries to define themselves in that prologue. And um, it, it also sounds like it's going to cover a large time period as well. We know this character survives because he's he's talking from the future about his past. But I'm interested to find out about the history of his life. He's got quite beautiful um, end and front covers as well. Um, so that's Sparrow by James Hines. And the last book in this pile is a collection of short stories by Moira Fowley called Eyes, Guts, Throat, Bones. Again, I thought this was quite a beautiful front cover and um, it feels like it's going to be a gothic collection of short stories. So right up my street. Um, inside it says, what will the end of the world look like? Yeah, perfect. Want to read it already? Uh, will it be an old man slowly turned to gold, flowers raining from the sky, or a hole cut through the fire, wire fencing that keeps the monsters out? Is it someone you love wearing your face, or a good old-fashioned interdimensional summoning? Does it sound like a howl outside the window, or does it look like coming home? This startling and irresistibly witty collection from the phenomenally talented Moira Fowley is an exploration of all our darkest impulses and deepest fears. And um, yeah, really looking forward to reading that. Um, I think this was one that Jen Campbell spoke about on her video and she's never set me wrong yet in her recommendations. So this is my final one. Eyes, cuts, throat, bones. Um, guys got some throat bones even um, I hope that there's something in that list that inspires you and interests you I'd really love to know what you're reading at the moment and what you're enjoying and whether you've read any of those books if you are new to the channel do like and subscribe um, I do a series of these sorts of book hauls but I also do recommendations and um, reading uh, roundups every month because I set myself a challenge to read 100 books in 2023 which I'm doing really really well with I think I'm still buying more than I'm reading uh, which is a problem um, but I'm getting through those books and I've had some really fantastic reads which I've enjoyed sharing with you all so thank you very much have a lovely weekend and I'll see you again soon take care bye